Hey, welcome to my channel. This is a message for Tuesday, February the 7th, 2023. And I want to pose a question, just to ask you the question, why pray? Now, I could come up with all kinds of reasons why you should pray, but I want to share four scriptures from the Old Testament that will get at four good reasons to pray. Why pray? Now, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, give me thumbs up, do everything you can to help me get this out to other people. And so that you can know every time I put something out, I put out several things a day. A long time ago, I was pastor in a church here in Porterville, California. And we we would always do something, try to do something pretty spectacular on Easter to drag a bunch of people out so that we could uh, share Christ with them. And then over the course of the rest of the year, be leading them to the Lord, you know. And uh, so we would always try to do something like get almost double attendance or something like that on Easter. And we do something spectacular to try to, to try to get that done. So uh, one Easter, we we're running, probably running about 250 on an average Sunday. And we decided that, that we wanted to break 400 in attendance and just to generate a whole lot of people coming out. And, uh, and then we could share Christ with them and get, come to know them. So we decided we'd have one big service. We tried to figure out what place. We had two services in a small auditorium and uh, tried to figure out a good place to have it. We decided, this is a wild idea, that we would have it in our parking lot, okay? And we'd work out parking all around the place in, in other, other places close by on the street and stuff. And we'd have it organized. And so we put together this service and the, the, the final cog in the works, put everything together, set up in the parking lot, had people out there protecting it all night, praying that it wouldn't rain, Easter service, you know, and had uh, about 450 chairs set up out there. And the last thing we did is the last 24 hours before the service, we had people at the church in prayer for 24 hours, a 24-hour prayer vigil. And then the day came, great crowd showed up, people all parked out in the street, a lot of noise, Praise band going up there, shaking up the neighborhood. I went around and asked people in the neighborhood if they'd be offended, and oh, nobody had any problem with that. You know what the attendance was? 401. <laughs> we broke 400. We spent the rest of that year leading people to the Lord. So pray. We, we don't pray nearly enough. That's one of my convictions. And I want to share four good reasons to pray. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7 says this, what other nation is so great as to have their gods, little g, near them the way the Lord our God is near us? And listen to this, whenever we pray to him. Folks, God is near when we pray. We call on him and communicate. God is near to us when we pray to him. It's time to pray more. Now, I spend a lot of time in prayer now, probably more than I ever have in my life. And I've always prayed quite a bit for the last 50 plus years, 51 years. But I pray now, more now than I ever have. And I find, I find it more important. I put things out there that I'm asking God to do. And God shows up when we pray. Got to hang on to that. God is near when we pray. The second little lesson on prayer is from... 1 Samuel 12, 19 through 23. 1 Samuel 12, 19 through 23. The people all said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants that we will not die, for we have added to all our other sins the evil of asking for a king. They wanted a king. God said, What's wrong with me? <laughs> you know? And so they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul and eventually David and, and Solomon, some other people. But they asked for a king, and they and God wasn't pleased with that. Okay, verse 20, do not be afraid, Samuel replied. Uh, you have done all this evil, you have done all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn away after useless idols. They can do you no good, no good nor can they rescue you because they are useless. False gods are useless, okay? For the sake of this great, of his great name, the Lord will reject his people because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. 
As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by listening to this, by failing to pray for you, and I will teach you the way that is good and right. He is saying if he knew that he should be praying for them, he could sin by failing to pray for them. You know, if someone needs your prayer, you could be sinning by not praying for them. Think about that. So the, the, the thing you always need to do when someone needs prayer and they make it clear to you that they need prayer, whether they say they need prayer or not, when they come up with some terrible problem, stop, drop, and pray. That's what I say, you know, and pray. Don't just pray with them. One of the things I've been doing for years and years and years is when someone says, oh, I have this terrible problem, I said, would you be offended if I prayed with you? You know, when I was selling cars, I would say that to customers. No, I never had anybody say no. I still do that. Would you be offended if I prayed with you? No, I'd be tickled pink. So, and then pray with people. You could, I, I think sometimes we sin by failing to pray for people. So pray for people, you know, all the time. Now, 1 Kings 8, verse 30. Listen to this verse. Lessons on prayer. 1 Kings 8, verse 30. All I have to do is find the right place. 1 Kings 8, verse 30. It's just one little verse. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. He's talking about the temple. It just built the temple. Pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. He's talking about praying for a place. He, and he's talking about praying toward a place. Now, I live in California. I pray toward the place of California. I live in America. I pray toward the place of America. And I ask God to intervene on behalf of America and on behalf of California and on behalf of Arizona. I'm from Arizona, okay? So pray toward a place. Uh, we need to be praying for the nation of America. America, we need to pray toward that place. People need to repent and get God involved in their life. I'll tell you what I, what, what I pray for, for for the nation. I pray for a lot of things, but I pray that America would repent and that then there would be revival. That's how it works. You have to have repentance, and if not until repentance happens can revival happen. Repentance, then revival. So I pray for that. I pray toward the place of America. I pray toward the place of California. Where do you live? Pray toward the place. That's a good way to pray. Then 2 Kings 6, 2 Kings 6 16 and 17. 2 Kings 6, 16 and 17. And this is an interesting kind of prayer, and it's the kind of thing we skip. We miss this, okay? Don't be afraid, the prophet answered, the prophet Elisha. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Talking about a war with the Arameans. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, and he, O Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Those are the forces of the Lord, the spiritual forces of the Lord in heavenly places. God has his forces out there, angels, the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever, okay? But God has his forces out there, and we miss that. We miss that. We need to pray to see the forces of God and know that he can help us. I pray Ephesians 3.20 several times a day. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or think according to his power that's at work within us. Part of his forces are within us. His power is within us, the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray to see the forces of God. We need to know his power. And you can tap into that by praying toward a place. So, four lessons, okay? God, pray. When you pray, God is near, okay? God is near when we pray. Second, we can sin by failing to pray. So pray. 
when in doubt, it's it's kind of like saluting in the army. The drill sergeant said, if you're in doubt whether you, if you doubt whether you should should salute or not, whip it out. When in doubt, whip it out. Same with prayer. When in doubt, whip it out. Okay. And then third, pray toward a place. Pray toward America. Pray toward your state. Pray toward your town. I pray toward my town, Porterville, too. Pray to see God's forces so that you can understand the power and the forces that God has. And you know what? Here, it comes down to this. Pray and God will move. Hope you'll take that to heart.